I'm heartbroken that our community has lost such a kind and selfless soul. The tragic loss of a beloved civil rights icon has Baton Rouge City and parish leaders reeling. There is no information which leads us to believe that this is a hate crime. So what led to the murder of Sadie Roberts Joseph? All my mother ever wanted was for this community to come together. It's ironic that that happened in, her, in death. We were able to identify a suspect. But the arrest of a man she knew has raised more questions than answers. Good afternoon to you and welcome. I'm John Burns. Uh, my partner Dion Guillory is out at Baton Rouge headquarters where in just the last few hours we found out an arrest has been made, as you heard there, in the murder of Miss Sadie Roberts Joseph. Dion. In Roberts Joseph, a sigh of relief for her family and the community who have really been taking a really, really close look at this case. A pillar of our community killed. She was found in the trunk of her car on Friday, and we all in this community working to try to figure out who did this. And tonight, we now know, according to the police, they do have an arrest in this case. Now, when it comes to finding out who did this crime, uh, detectives worked tirelessly hours, especially during an emergency. We had the tropical storm over the weekend and Chief Murphy Paul putting in perspective exactly how the case folded, unfolded and how they were able to find the suspect in this case. Uh, NBC Local 33's Crystal Whitman was at the news conference just a couple of hours ago and she's joining me now to kind of run down how things went. Crystal, uh, you were there, uh, a packed room. Um, her family was there, Chief Paul was there, it's kind of set up the scene and how the uh, mood was in the room. Yeah, Dion, good afternoon. Well, it was very emotional there when Ron Bell was charged with first degree murder. It was definitely a surprise to hear that, you know, he was a tenant of the victim and he owed her $1,200 in rent. Um, and so it was just really emotional. I reached out to the daughter and I asked, you know, what was the last thing that you said to your mom? And the last thing that she was doing was preparing for, uh, for the storm that was coming. So it was definitely really emotional as a journalist. It was emotional for me. I never met the woman. I know that you did. Uh, Chief Murphy just really um, thanked the police department, state police, the crime lab, uh, the district attorney, and everybody, and just working so diligently to actually come with, you know, with this uh, arrest of the suspect. So uh, at this time, uh, I think we have sound from the police chief. Let's try to go to that right now. Uh, well, we were actually here from the police chief, but kind of go a, a little bit more and how um, he was able to basically run down the steps of how they were able to find the suspect that they say who killed her. Sure. All right. Well, they got lots of tips and information from people in the community. So they really want to thank the citizens here and Baton Rouge for all of their words of encouragement, all of their tips. Uh, they did tell us in the news conference that they got a couple of calls on Friday uh, afternoon about a body, unfortunately. Um, that was found in the car. They did a little bit more digging, and uh, also Police Chief uh, Paul Murphy thanked um, the detectives that were on scene too. They were also a critical point in this investigation with preserving the evidence. Obviously, as you know, Dion, it was definitely raining on Friday. So uh, again, they're just thankful uh, of the community, of the detectives, and uh, the DA also talked about how this is not over with yet. So they didn't want to give too many details because there is still going to be a case. He is considered a suspect right now, as we know, and television, so he's not uh, char or guilty right now, but he is definitely a suspect. Uh, it was an emotional day for the daughter. I asked, you know, again, what she said, and so she's being strong, but I mean, it's pretty difficult for all of us in the community. Yes, so. definitely, definitely mm -hmm. uh, very, very difficult. And Crystal, we know you're going to have much more for us coming up tonight at 6. And, you know, as Crystal was breaking down just how Chief Murphy Paul was able to uh, run down how the investigation unfolded. Uh, we actually have uh, Chief Murphy Paul joining us right now. Uh, Chief, it's hot out here. Thank you for joining us and taking us the time. Uh, first question for you, how are you feeling right now about these developments? Well, you know, it, it's, it's, uh, it's a good feeling when we're able to get uh, someone off the street who uh, committed a, a horrific act. So, you know, that, that's a great thing. Uh, you know, the family's mourning right now. Uh, we're going to go to the vigil tonight. And uh, continue to show support for the uh, for the family and all of, also for this community. But I tell you, you know, when I heard uh, her daughter speak today, and 
you know, listening to the mom, you know, the first thing I thought she'd get it from her mom, mm -hmm. right? That's yeah. the thing that came to mind. She was so well-spoken. And I just hope that this becomes contagious and that we can take this uh, tragedy and hopefully find some way to continue uh, Miss Sadie's efforts in, 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 in this community and coming together and helping stop uh, bring violence uh, to, to the city, the violence that's been plaguing us for far too long. Yeah. Her, her body was found in the trunk of that car on a Friday. Yeah. Um, we all were dealing with what was going to be Barry. How were you able to have your men and women on the ground uh, dealing with an impending storm as well as trying to solve this crime? Well, you look, our, our officers, our detectives are committed. You know, when, when we met that uh, Saturday morning after, because uh, the incident happened on a Friday, uh, we met that Saturday morning to put up, uh, to put together a plan and made sure we had a team in place uh, to follow up on these leads as they came in. Uh, we knew early on that when it was Miss Sadie that we were going to get a lot of interest. Uh, didn't realize how many people were going to uh, 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 support us and provide information. So we knew we had to have a team on the ground ready to respond to all of the uh, legions that were coming in. Uh, but they were committed, you know. I mean, these guys do this all the time. You know, one thing about our detectives, you know, they step up. When they know they have a job to do, they don't complain. They go out there and they do what they have to do. Mm -hmm. um, it was something like this, uh, and, you know, a couple of weeks ago, you and the mayor came out and was talking about the, the shootings that we've had yeah. uh, in the last couple of months. Um, Homicide, murder numbers down, That's but great. the number of shootings is up. What do you say to the people at home now about their safety and the work that you guys are doing? So just to make sure we're clear, the number of shootings are down. Okay. People injured in non-fatal shootings are up. So what does that mean? That means we've had several shootings, like the one at the nightclub, where multiple people were shot. Mm -hmm. But overall shooting incidents are down in the city of Baton Rouge as compared to last year, as compared to the year before. We just had a few more non-fatal uh, non, non injury shootings, gotcha. okay? But shootings overall are down. Homicides are down over 30% right now. So there is problem. We got a lot of work that needs to be done uh, in, in this city. And you know, when we talked about this in that community meeting, you know, a lot of this starts at home. A lot of this starts in the community. And we need the community to continue doing their part. And they have been. We have to give them and recognize and acknowledge the work that they've done to help us get the numbers down. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, because of the historical uh, uh, culture here, we got a lot of work to do. We got a lot of work to do to meet the uh, public's expectations. And it starts with building those relationships so that people who trust us, like they trust Miss Sadie, mm -hmm. and they're not scared to pick up that phone and say, hey, we have information, Chief. They're not uh, scared to send that email or something they've seen on the blog and send it to us or send it to my detectives and say, we want to help. That's what we need to be. Yeah, definitely. And that, that, that's exactly where you're trying to move. And Absolutely. hopefully more cases could end the way Miss Sadie's case that's, ended. That's what we hope. Because here's the red. There's a small group of people that's involved in the majority of the crime. It's these same bad actors committing the crimes over and over again. So when we get them off the streets, we help reduce crime. Chief Murphy, Paul, thank you for your time. Appreciate it. I know you're heading over yes, to the vigil, which starts in less than an hour yes, over at the museum. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. All right. You. Okay, so there you heard it from Chief Paul that it was the community who really helped uh, police and the detectives uh, put this case uh, together. And uh, while he had his news conference just a couple of hours ago, we also heard from Miss Sadie's daughter. You know, it's a very emotional time for her family. You know, they are dealing with the loss of the patriarch of the family, uh, someone who was was a, obviously a pillar of this community, and uh, here is what her daughter said. I can't make it more clear that as heinous as this is and as difficult as it has been to go through, there was at least some solace in knowing and feeling that everything that could possibly be done was being done. She worked so hard. She pushed. She got everything that she could out of the 75 years that she lived. Probably double or triple the average person. And there you heard a just from her daughter talking about her mother's life, her legacy, and um, what she put in 
uh, the time she lived. Uh, something else that you know, we're not only hearing reaction from her daughter and her family members, but we're also hearing reaction from more of the people who knew her best. And they are the ones who could really put into perspective uh, her life, her legacy, and just the type of person she was around. She was uh, a joy to be around. For that, we want to send things over to NBC Local 33's Kara St. Cyr for that part of the story. Kara? I've been in and out of the African American Museum all day since about noon, and people have slowly but surely started trickling in to pay their respects to the late Sadie Roberts Joseph. They've been leaving things like flowers, stuffed animals, and lots of handwritten notes just to let her know that she was loved and she was appreciated. Now, the general consensus from everyone that I've spoken to today was that Joseph was energetic and a keeper of history, and that she was a bright light for the city of Baton Rouge. She started this place to keep the community together, and that's what the people here are coming to celebrate today. Now, there is going to be a vigil. The kids back down here to meet her and let her tell them, you know, the story of the things that she witnessed and experienced. But, you know, sometimes you wait and you wait too long. There is going to be a vigil held later on today for Miss Sadie Roberts, but. We're going to have those information. We're going to have that information for you at six o'clock, so you can just check with us, and we'll have those updates. So back to you, Dion. All right, Kara Sincere, uh, live for us on that angle of people just reacting, and so many people in the community taking to social media and talking about how they were um, impacted by Miss Sadie and the words, the kind words, and the great things. Uh, she's done for this community. Uh, you know, a big thing was the museum, which is where Kara was, and that's where that um, that vigil is going to be held in less than an hour at six o'clock. And the big thing about the uh, Baton Rouge bus tour and that kind of thing. So it is so much with her uh, her legacy, and of course, so many people in the community are going to work hard to keep that legacy alive. And Jean, um, just a quick note: when I I've, I've met her twice, and the first time I met her, and I. I didn't even have to tell her my name, and she knew, you know, with, uh, she said with my last name, my na last name being Guillory, she was like, I know that you have a complete legacy with uh, such a South Louisiana last name, and it, it was just a joy just to have those brief conversations with her, and she gave me a hug, and it was a great hug, and a, a hug that I most likely, uh, and so many people out there who most likely probably got the same hug that they will never forget.